Hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to put up a little uh, short uh, clip of an explanation of the video you're going to watch. So, um, I attempted to try to use the photo etch from Nymix, which you'll see in the next section of this video. And I wanted you, and I wanted to attempt to do a flag with it. And I know it could be done. Everything that you're going to see is trial and error. I have not attempted to do this before I put it on camera. Everything you're seeing is, you know, what I attempted, what didn't work, what did work. Um, so this is a learning process for me because I've never tried to do this before. At least not like this. I've made other flags and things like that using tracing and things like that. But this was something brand new for me. So I uh, hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you got any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this little quick uh, tutorial that I did on the photo wedge and making a flag. Bye. Hi everybody. Uh, if you remember, I had purchased these templates it's a photo wedge so I thought I'd show you how I was going to make a flag with one of them so what I did was I have some watercolor paper which you can purchase at a local art supply store it's a little heavy weight flexible but it will absorb paint really well it would take paint really well so what I did is I went through and cut out the size flag that I wanted. So this is uh, three inches by an inch and a half. And I'll draw a center line here so I know where the two halves of the flags are. Um, I tacked this down using blue tack. And I'm gonna go with Two of these. Okay, and I'm essentially going to place one on each side. Kind of like that. Okay, and then I'm going to paint it. So, what I'm going to do first before I do all this, is I'm going to just prime the paper gray um, just so I have something for the uh, next layers of paint to stick to. So I'm gonna go prime it gray, and I'll come back and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so I've primed um, the watercolor paper with gray. It's now dry. And now I'm going to paint it with some scale color uh, Mojave white, so essentially an off-white, okay, uh, or a cream white, I guess. <clears throat> and I'm going to coat it with this. And then I'll go and attach the photo etch stencil to each side of the flag. And then I will paint over that red, but I'll show you what it looks like in between. So I'll be right back. Okay. As you can see, I finished a couple of coats of that Mojave white. And then I went back over the center where the cross will sit with pure white, because I really want that to pop after I get done uh, painting the red over this. But what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take just a little bit of blue tack All right, that's my airbrush. What I'm gonna do is just take the cross, a little bit of blue tack, put it on the tips, kind of like this. Do 
do that for each point on the cross. Oops, kind of hard to do on the camera here. Kind of like that. Here. Okay. Another piece. On that side. Okay, then I'm do pull this a little bit closer to me so I can see this. Flip it over. is essentially where I want it. Push this down. All right. And I'll go through and I'll clean up this little bit of blue tack here. But essentially, I want it to hold as well as possible. And I'll do the other side in a minute off camera. Okay. And then I'm gonna paint over all of this with red. Okay, and I'll be back when I'm done with that. Oh, and I do have to say that in between each layer of paint, I've been using a hair dryer to uh, dry the layers of paint. Uh, the nice thing about the watercolor paper is that it does dry pretty quickly, but um, I'm just using the hair dryer to kind of speed up the process. Sorry, right, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm uh, back, and as you can see, I've painted the entire flag in red. And now what I'm going to do is slowly peel the uh, photo etch stencil off of the, um, gee, words, Victor, off of the paper. Whew. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, hopefully nothing has bled through and there should be a nice white cross underneath there. So I'll be right back. Okay. So I've taken the, uh, metal crosses off and you'll see there was a little bit of bleed and I had to go back in and do a little bit of touch up with the white, uh, mostly because I rushed this and I didn't really allow the layers to dry before I started putting on the next ones. So before I pull uh, this flag off of the cardboard so I can actually put it on, on a uh, little bit of a, a uh, flagpole just so you can see it like that, I am going to allow this to dry for quite a while and then I will uh, show you the finished product, okay? but. Essentially, because I rushed it, uh, there was some bleed, and also when I pulled the um, the crosses off, the uh, blue tack left a little bit of a residue and pulled some of the initial layer of white off, so it went back down to that pale white. So I had to go back in and touch that up. But I think if I had been a little bit more patient, uh, that wouldn't have happened. So I'm gonna let this dry completely before I uh, try to remove it from the cardboard. Talk to you again. Hey everybody, so I'm back. This is finally dried. And I removed it from the cardboard, which actually was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, it, with all the paint layers and everything on it, it almost became like glue. So you'll actually see over here, it tore just a little bit up in this one section. Um, I then went and squared off some of the corners and things like that. Um, so this was definitely a 
trial and error tutorial. Everything you saw wasn't edited. Uh, I didn't try to stop and do something different to make it look like it was better than what it was. So you actually have seen what uh, happened the first time I tried to do this. Um, definitely learned some things. Um, first is definitely allow each layer to dry sufficiently before applying the next one. That was probably the biggest outcome on this. Um, as for some of the other things, um, I might try something other than blue tack to try to keep the uh, photo etch attached to the uh, uh, paper. Maybe a little touch of white glue maybe might be better. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to try something and see what happens. But um, yeah, so this is it. Um, you're looking at uh, the final product for this. I will definitely try this again and, you know, kind of tweak this a little bit and see what happens. But again, you know, this is all about um, showing you guys some of the mistakes and, uh, you know, so we can all learn from it if you want to try this. I thought overall it was a pretty good process. Um, and like I said, I was pretty much making it up as I went along. So, you know, that's that. Talk to you all soon. I hope you're all having a great weekend and I hope you enjoyed this little quick uh, demonstration of what I was attempting to do. So everybody have a great weekend. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.